How about attending God's naming ceremony? That would be cool. I mean, we read in the book, in the gospel, how our Lord Jesus Christ was named. God named him himself. It's only God that can name himself. We cannot name God because names are just not something that we give to God because he sounded nice, you know. Um, people name God with fantastic name like, you know, the good guy upstairs and things like that. Just stop it. We don't name God. <laughs> we receive God's revelation of himself. So if we call God by a name, is because God has revealed himself by that name. Okay, and this is very important. God named himself by revealing something of his characters, something of his power, something of, of his will, of his purpose. And when God reveals something of himself, and then that becomes a name by which we name God. In helping us to dig a little bit further into the importance of name with respect to God. I want to read Psalm 9, verse 10, and also highlight all these other verses. Psalm 9, verse 10 says, And they who know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, and that Lord there is all letter capitalized, which is Yahweh or Jehovah, has not forsaken those who seek thee. I will read it once again. And they who know thy name will put their trust in thee. Now, what do you think that verse is saying? They who know thy name. Is it saying that they who know what your name sound like? Is that what he's saying? Is it saying they who know how to spell your name? It is possible for us to be able to rattle out all the names of God in Hebrews and in Greek and even rattle it out in Latin and Queen's English in whatever language you want to rattle it out, which is nice, and still not know his name. Look at what that scripture says, that the result of knowing God's name is that we put our trust in him. We can reverse it and say that we will not trust God or, or we will not trust God unless we know his name. In other words, the way to develop faith in God is to know who God is. So to know the name of God is to know God, is to know who God is, is to know his characteristics, is to know his attributes, is to know his will, is to know his purpose, is to know his, um, his love, his grace. So, they who know your name, to know the name of God, is equal to have a revelation of who God is. So God's name is God's revelation of who God is. The names of God conveys to us the many faceted characteristics and work of our God. So when we know God, or when we know the name of God, what we are saying is that we are knowing God in his fullness, in his character, in his wonder. The names of God tells us something about his deeds. Somebody's name stand in his stead. So so when we when when I when I when people when somebody say I come to you in the name of somebody, what what is that saying? I'm it's saying that I'm coming to you in the fullness of what that person represents. So 
a person's name may be said to do his deeds. When you, when we understand what a name is, you will understand why, as you read the scripture, you you will you will come across a situation where somebody's name is said to be doing his deeds. So you read. A situation where they talk about the name of God, doing the deeds of God, standing in the place of God, okay, in relation to man. And this is very important. Genesis chapter 21, verse 33, and chapter 26, verse 25, talks about calling upon the name of God. When we call upon the name of God, what does that mean? Does that mean that we, we call the letter? No, 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 no. To call upon the name of God is to worship Him. You see, that name represents him. That name is standing in God's place. So, so when we talk about the name of God, we are talking about God. So to call upon God's name is not to, to, to just make a sound. It is not to just make a, a you know, a, 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 to just pronounce the name. To call upon the name of God is not just pronouncing the name. To call upon the name of God is to worship him. Jeremiah 23 Verse 27 talks about people who forgot his name. <laughs> what does it mean to forget? Oh, I forgot God's name. Mm. What is that Hebrew name of God? No, that's not what he's saying. I mean, obviously, we should remember his name. All right. To forget the name of God is to depart from him. His name is a revelation of him. So the scripture used the name because when we understand what the name is, the name then stand in the place of the person because the name is the revelation of the person. His characteristic, his nature, his power, his glory, his riches, his achievement, his purpose, his desire. So to forget God's name is to depart from him. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. It talks about to honor god's name what does it mean to honor god's name does that mean that when we call the name we bow our head or we roll on the ground there's nothing wrong in that if that is what you do in your denomination but to honor god's name is much more than that because it is easy for me to buy my head when i call jesus or when i call god and yet my life dishonor him and yet the way i speak the way i live the way I think, honor him. So to honor God's name is to honor God. Is to honor God in my thought, in my action, in my desire. And Exodus chapter 20 verse 7 talks about not to take the name of God in vain. You shall not take the name of of the lord and the lord there is all capital letters your god in vain now this is going to be important when we come back to the issue of yahweh and jehovah that we've been talking about because that word here there is you shall not take the name of yahweh or jehovah your god in vain what does that mean it means that we must not dishonor god's reputation either by words that speak of him in a foolish or misleading way or by action that do not reflect the true character of God. To take the name of God in vain is actually to dishonor his majesty. 